Hey everyone, today we're gonna be doing lower third templates and I will show you how to build them procedurally. Um, on the internet you can find quite a lot of tutorials explaining how to build this kind of stuff, but I would like to focus on how do you approach building your own templates, uh, how do you prepare the design and actually build it together. So the whole thing is responsive, um, it's solid, so it doesn't break easily and you can easily package those um, templates you create and create um, essential graphics templates out of them or even try and sell them. So for example, as you can see, they fit you know, short or long text and even deal with stuff like the senders or punctuation marks with ease. Um, so in this tutorial, I will walk you through how to prepare something simple, like so, and then I will show you how to make something more complex, and later on we will deal with creating some expressions to handle this kind of stuff, like the senders and automated offset based on detection of this stuff. Okay, so let's start it from the beginning. So when I'm building a lower third template, uh, first I start with the design. In this case, I decided to have just a simple uh, lines of text, name of the person, the role, and then separated with um, shape layer um, with the in the company colors, for example. Once I have the design, I have to decide my constraints. I want this shape layer to resize automatically with text itself. Okay, so it always has to fit no matter if it's like single line or double line and so on. It has, always has to fit this layer. Another constraint is I want to be able to change the size of shape layer itself, uh, make it a bit thicker or thinner, it depends if the requirements change easily without digging into the code. Um, and the last requirement is to have the gaps between those three layers be the same distance no matter what, no matter how long the bottom or top text is. Okay, so the, uh, the way you do this, it's, in this case, I created a control null. This null controls the position of all three layers. So basically, the way I did this, it's simply started with name um, text layer and I parent, well, parent, I rigged everything to it and the name text layer is being rigged to control layer. So let's have a look at the expressions I used. So first of all, I want to make sure that the anchor point stays in the same place no matter what. So expression for this looks like so. So what it does is, in this case, it uses, um, I created a variable s which, reference, which references this text layer it looks at this text layer at the source record time. So this function basically gets dimensions of the of the of the layer itself at specific time, um, and then by using this variable, and then I can access different dimensions like width, height, top, and left side. And by using simple maths, I can push easily the anchor point to the bottom left corner. And this expression. I'll be reusing it in all of those three layers, just changing the end um, array to make anchor point, you know, position it in the um, top left corner, or in this case, left center. So the reason I'm using anchor point expression um, on this layer is because if it's turned off, every time I change something, like uh, change the name of the person and it's longer or shorter, I'll have to use the anchor the pan tool and manually just go in and you know adjust it. And this can be a little bit tedious and not 100% precise because if you're dealing with number of uh, lower third titles, you want all of them to look the same for the consistency. So by having this expression on, it may always make sure that the anchor point is in this spot. Position expression, it's pretty simple. I'm simply referencing the position of the control layer because everything is being linked to this point. 
then Shapeplay itself. I will show you expressions, how they look like. So first of all, anchor point. The code is very similar to this one. So basically what it does, it simply pushes the anchor point to the middle of this layer. Because I'm animating this uh, shape layer using scale property. So it goes from left to right, basically. So if, let's say, if, I'm, uh, if the animation is a little bit different, um, the animation will go from this point, the top left, and it wouldn't look as, as the way I want it to look like, basically. <laughs> so I wanted to uh, make sure that the, um, in this case, anchor point was dead in this position, especially because uh, I'm aligning all three layers to the same X value, which is this one over there. Okay, so that was the anchor anchor point expression. Position is a little bit different. It's a little bit more complex. And let me just open up those effects. There you go. So the way I approach this is at first I have to define sources. So control, which is control layer, and name pos, which is this layer, the position. Then I'm defining variables I use. So I created two sliders, one for text gap and one for the line height. So text gap is basically the value of the distance between this layer and this layer, and then this layer and this layer. So I want to be able to control this distance to adjust it dynamically. For example, if I change my mind, I want this to be a little bit taller or uh, make it a little bit shorter, likewise. And same with the line height. Right, I could just make it like really, really tiny or really thick, right? So I don't want to, Every time I need to change something, I don't want to just go and dig in, in the code in the shape layers uh, size, which I'll show you in a minute. So where were we? So we have the um, two variables, which is these guys, which is two sliders. Okay, and then we're defining X and Y, the starting position. So in this case, I'm using the name um, text layer as my starting point. X stays the same. So the whole thing stays on one line, like so. And Y, it's being calculated from this point. So first I need to add the gap by adding um, values to Y, we're pushing everything down. And then I'm adding the half of the line height. So I want to be able to add this distance, okay? And at the end, we're just feeding this into the array X and then Y, and this is perfectly positioned underneath our text layer. And the last layer, which is basically another text layer, has very similar expressions uh, to the first one. So anchor point expression, same stuff as before. The uh, array at the end is a little bit different. So I'm pushing the um, anchor point to the top left side of the uh, text layer. Now position expression looks like this. It's very similar to position expression on the shape layer. So let me go through it. So first again, defining the sources, control, uh, control layer, and then underline pos, which is underline position, this layer. Um, so we're defining the our variables, which is basically the uh, sliders, the text gap and line height, and defining X and Y. So again, X and Y of this point, and then we have to calculate new Y position because we want everything to stay on the same line on the X. So we have to push everything down by adding the text gap and adding this little distance. And that's about it. We're just feeding this into array. And that's how the whole thing looks like. So, so by approaching everything from kind of top to bottom um, approach, as in control layer, it's basically defining the starting point of everything. Then I'm using name as uh, my lead position uh, driver for these two layers. So by literally daisy chaining everything together, so this layer is looking at this layer, which is looking at this layer, which is looking at this layer, and the anchor point and position are locked. This way, everything stays exactly where I want it to stay, no matter if the name is shorter or the title is shorter, likewise. So this way you have consistency across your, the whole designs. 
Um, and that's the way I approach building those um, lower third titles.